Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 16. My name is Andy and today we are doing the exercises from module A3. So this that's all the stuff about traits and generics and stuff like that. Um, so do watch the videos before you get to here. And if you want to do the exercises yourself, uh, make sure you pause here, um, have a go yourself. The links to this uh, page are um, in the description. Uh, and yeah, I would encourage you have a go yourself before you watch me do it, unless you're just watching for fun, in which case, you know, just watch along. All right, so uh, the exercises uh, are one big project here. I've had a quick look at it. I haven't done it in advance, so you're gonna you're gonna see me struggle along with you uh, and how to do it. Um, but yeah, it's a big thing called creating a local storage vec. So in this exercise, we're gonna create a type called local storage vec, which is a list of items like a vec but it resides on the stack or the heap. So essentially it's going to have a, it's going to be either a, a smallish chunk of stuff that is of a known size, um, or if it's too big, um, then it'll just be, it'll use a vec inside. Um, yeah, so if it's small enough, then we store it on the stack, otherwise it's back, uh, sorry, and, and it's backed by an array. Um, if not, uh, it'll be backed by a vec. Um, and it's going to have a type T of like, what am I storing in the VEC? But also it's going to have a number N, which is the size of the array, which is the like small chunk of, if there's space, put it in here. Um, so it's going to have two generic type parameters. One is a number, which is maybe unusual or surprising. Um, but it works the way you'd hope it would. And then as soon as it becomes big, um, we use a vec instead. Okay, uh, so before we start, these questions. When is such a data structure more efficient than a standard vec? Um, well, I've definitely used a string class that worked a bit like this. Uh, it can be a complete disaster because you, um, you allocate space for your array, but then you end up not using it and stuff like that. But where it is useful is if you have a lot of um, in this case, small vex, which only have a number which fits inside whatever the, the size of your array, then um, it's much faster, right? You don't have to go and look for dynamic um, heap space. Uh, so every time you make one of these things, instead you can just use this array, which uh, you know the size of, so it gets allocated on the stack or it gets allocated as part of some other uh, chunk that's being found on the heap already. Um, so uh, it saves time, both in um, finding memory and in cleaning up memory afterwards. Uh, and the main downside, I would say, is that you allocate that array even when you're not using it. So you can end up using tons and tons of extra memory if you've got a load of vectors that are like a little bit bigger than the array size that you specified. Um, and you can't use the array, it's useless but you use that space up anyway, because the whole point of this is that it's a known size, right? So that known size includes the, show, the space for that array, even if you're not using that array. Okay, so let's open up um, the folder it told us to open, which we're in here, and have a quick look inside. So it's got a normal cargo.toml and a source folder, and inside there's a lib.rs, which I've opened up here. Um, and it's got a load of comments in there. Um, yeah, it contains lib.rs. So that means this crate is a library. So it doesn't have a main method. It has, um, it, it's going to be a library, uh, which get, uh, gets used by someone else's main method, essentially. Um, it contains some tests, which you can, which can be run by running cargo test. So let's try running cargo test. Um, and I think a load of stuff will go wrong. So T is never used. And there's probably a load of other stuff that will go wrong if we get past that. Don't worry if you don't pass or even compile. It's your job to fix it. Most of the tests are commented out. So we're going to enable them one by one. But before we start, let's have a look at the code and read the comments. Because they contain helpful clues. And then we'll get on to exercise 3A3A. Right, so let's have a look at the code. 
So we've got a thing called local storage spec, which is an enum. And as we mentioned, it's got a, um, a generic parameter, which is a T, which implies it's a type. And then it's got this, um, this generic parameter N, which is a const N colon U size. So that is going to be a number. So every time you make a local storage spec, you say what type of thing is going to be held in it, which is a T and also a number, which is the size of this fixed array of stuff, which um, uh, we're going to hold on to. And then there's nothing inside here, which is, which is an enum. It should definitely have some types defined inside. So we're going to add some there in a minute. Um, then they've provided us with a from implementation, which I don't want to look at too closely yet, because they actually say um, it's like they gave it to us because it's complicated. But it's it's it, it basically transforms from an array of size n of t's into a local storage vec. Um, so that would be useful for making one of these vecs out of an array that we've already got. We'll skip over the implementation of that and have a look at the tests. So um, this is an interesting test. It's ignored but it's there just to make sure everything compiles. And it says you're not supposed to unignore it. Right? And it's just a trick to say, will this thing compile? So basically, um, make a, like define this thing called vec, that's just our variable name, which is a local storage vec of U32s of size 10. And then we say equals loop, which basically means we'll never get past this line. And that has the never type, which means it does it, it does compile because um, the never type kind of can, can be considered as anything. So it could be a local storage vec. But basically what that means is and because you never get past this line, you don't have to worry about what the type of this thing is because you never get past this expression, I guess. Um, and then we can do some more stuff with vex, which will which should compile, but will never get run. And what we're doing is we're doing a match on it and we're expecting it to have inside it um, these two things, stack and heap. And we saw that we don't have anything inside it yet. So our first job, I think, is going to be defining these things. Okay, and there's a load more tests. So we'll just look at one of these. We'll look at all of them. Um, and it, this is a test that says it from vex, which is an interesting way of describing it. But basically it means um, we can make a local storage vec so, from, yeah, local storage vec from a vector of uh, containing one, two, three. Uh, and we can make one with an array. You see, this, this is where we're passing in this n parameter, the size of the array inside it. Here we're saying if we've got a size of 10 and we make it from a vec of size 3, it'll work and it'll give us something that's... Uh, this is wrong. I think this should be stacked, shouldn't it? And then... Uh, if it's got a size 2, that means this vec of 3 is bigger than its size. So surely that should be heap. Um, but the, the, I guess the reason why it might give us a heap variant is because we're making it from a vec, maybe? Um, we need to think about that when we get to it. Feels like it should be a stack because it fits inside because it's there's, ten, there's an array of size 10 in there and we've only got three things to put in there. So think about that later. So we've had a bit of a look at the code, which is what they told us to do. And now we get on to the first exercise, which is just defining that type. So it says the, the enum is incomplete, as we saw, and we should give it two variants, stack and heap. Stack should contain a buff and a len. And buff is this array that we've been talking about, which can hold n items of type T. And len is like how many items are actually in that array because we have to make the array of a fixed size, but only a certain number of them will actually contain stuff. Uh, and then the heap variant just contains a vec. So basically, that's when we give up. We um, we have this, the, the whole point of a local storage vec is we either hold it manually in this little array, or we give up and just say, okay, hold it in a vec, just like normal, in which case there was kind of no point using local storage vec. You see what I mean? Um, and then if we've defined those variants correctly, cargo test should print that. Um, okay, let's try it. So it says we need uh, two, two things called stack and heap, and stack contains buff and len. 
So stack. Contain two named things, buff, which is going to be an array of T's of size N. And what was the other one called? Oh, len, which is going to be a U size, which is how many of those, how many things in this buffer, this stack, this, this thing uh, are actually used. And then the other variant is just going to be heap, and it's going to contain a vec of T. And it's not going to use N. <clears throat> so it's worth noting here um, that, oh gosh, what's happened to my terminal? Um, it's worth noting that N is not the size of the, the, the number of things that are held inside this vec or anything like that. N is the size of this buffer that allows us to do this kind of optimized storage of um, stuff where we don't need to bother with a vec and the heap memory allocations that are required to do that. Um, and I missed a bracket here. That's what's going here. Well, I used diagonals when I should have used round. Okay. So I think that's probably all we need to do for this exercise. Let's see whether cargo test is happy. Cargo test is happy. Look, it, it, it compiles. This test is ignored, but it does compile, which is all that we're hoping for from that test. So what's that? Is that what we're expecting? Yeah, test is okay. All right. Should we look at the hints? Um, you, yeah, the, the test case might help here, which it did because the test case that we got to pass now shows us that there's a stack and a heap, um, which is exactly what we made. And oh, and they, this hint just gives us the answer. Fine. Okay, so um, exercise B, implementing from VEC. So it says uncomment the test it from vex and add an implementation for from vec of t to local storage vec. And it's actually giving us some code to paste in. All right, so first of all, we'll uncomment the test. Like so. Um, I was hoping it would, oh, there we go. I was hoping it would format itself. There you go. All right, so we've got this test which says I've got a vec. Uh, no, no, I'm creating a vec by saying from and then passing in a normal vector. This vec macro just makes a vector and it should provide us with a vec. And also I've, I've got a vec um, which is of size, has an uh, array inside it of size two and that also gives us that. So I really think, I really don't understand why this is heap. I feel like it should be stack. Um, let's see. I guess it's a, it's a choice here. Like maybe if you make one from a vec, you don't move the stuff into the stack. You just keep it in a vec like that. Let's let's assume the test code is correct for now, and we might change our minds later. Oh yeah, look. It says, copy the code in, replace the to-do macro invocation with your code that creates a heap-based local storage vec. Okay, so I guess the point is, we've already got a vec, so there's no point copying all that stuff into our local array. Um, we'll just keep it as a vec. I guess that makes sense. So let's copy that, that code. Like so. So this is Im it's implementing from vec for a local storage vec. So we're creating a local storage vec from a vec, which means we've got a function which takes in a vec and returns a self, which is a local storage vec. So we've got to implement this. Um, and I think it's just going to be self. Um, heap of V, right? Is it that easy? We, If we're deciding it's always heap, and the implementation of heap is really straightforward, right? It, it's just, it just holds onto a vec. We've already got a vec, which we've got ownership of, because we're not taking a reference or anything here. So we just return 
um, ourselves. So we're, this is interesting. We're not making use of this stack yet at all. We're just able to make ourselves from a VEC now. Let's see if that works. Um, yes, it that, that test passed and we confirmed that it ran. I would have, I should have run this before we implemented that, shouldn't I? Uh, maybe I could just put it back to having a to-do. Like so, run it. Got to check it fails before you check it passes, right? <clears throat> yep, it failed because our to-do happened. So, fine. All right. So, that's that exercise. Uh, let's try again. <laughs> that exercise done. Fine. So, um, okay, question. How would you pronounce the first line of the code you just copied? So, the first line is this. I would pronounce that um, implement from VEC for local storage, and then I'd skip over all the rest. But in, if I wanted to be more specific, I would say, um, given the the generic parameters T and N, which is a U size, implement from VEC of T for a local storage VEC of T and N. And how I try and explain that is essentially, this is the code that converts a local, sorry, creates a VEC into a local storage VEC. And it has generic type parameter T and generic uh, const parameter N, which is the size of the unused, in this case, array of storage inside local storage VEC. So just to go back to the thing of how that array always gets allocated, or that, that the space for that array always gets created, even if you're not using it, let's just think about that for a second. So this enum type, um, in terms of your code, it's either a stack or a heap, right? Um, so it's very straightforward for you when you're just writing code. When you encounter a local storage vec, it's either going to be a stack or a heap. But for the compiler, um, it's also true it's going to be either a stack or a heap. But in order for that to work for the compiler, yeah, it puts a little bit of information right at the beginning, or probably right at the beginning, saying this is either a stack or a heap. So that would probably be just like one bit or, this, or one byte or something. A small amount of information just saying it's either a stack or a heap. And then enough space to fit either, right? So either um, uh, like the the static bits of a VEC, which is a, the like location of the dynamically held memory and the capacity and the length. So maybe three bytes or something like that. But also it needs enough space because it doesn't know which is which, but which because the whole point is it's a known size. Um, it's going to need to hold space for this entire stuff, which is like uh, enough space for a U size. Hang on, I was talking rubbish when I said three bytes. It's three like pointer size numbers, so three, I guess, three kind of U size size things, which may be twelve bytes. Um, so yeah, um, four bytes for the length, maybe, and then enough space for this entire array to be right here. So if we made this like 1,024, then the size of local storage VEC would be 1,024 plus a bit for the extra information, even when it's a heap variant. So the rest of that space in that case wouldn't be used, but it still needs to be there because the whole point is it's a known size. Anyway, uh, if that didn't make any sense, ignore me. Let's go back to exercise C. <clears throat> um, so we're going to add some methods to local storage VEC. So create an impl block for local storage vec. Fine. So the way you make create an impl block for local storage vec, you might think it would be just like impl local storage vec. But in, the point is we need to supply a T and an N here. Um, uh, because every time you mention a local storage vec, it needs to have a T and an N. So in order to do that, we actually need this stuff to say when you're when you're using this impl block, you need to give me a T and an N so that I can give that T and the N to the local storage vec that we're implementing here. Okay, so I've made an impl block. Don't forget to declare and provide the generic parameters. Um, for now, to make implementations easier, we'll add a bound to T, requiring that implements copy and default. Okay, so the way we would do that is we would add a where in here where t is copy and default. I think that's just going to look like that. Fine. Um, and then we're going to uncomment the test, it constructs. 
So let's find that. Here it is. So what does it constructs do? It allows you to create a, a new VEC um, uh, with, containing U sizes and uh, 10 of them in, the, in its static array. And then it asserts that it will be a stack based. We've created, a, the one we created is stack based uh, and its length is zero because we haven't put any things into it yet, right? Okay, so let's try running right now. Shouldn't work, right? Yeah, so there's no new function. So let's make a new function inside that um, input block we just made. And it's going to return self. And let's, let's, uh, well, let's just to do it first and check with, um, we can even make the test fail. Yeah, it fails by hitting that to do. Okay, so new doesn't take any arguments, which is fine. So now let's do what it's supposed to do, which is return a self stack. Um, and it's going to contain, it's got to contain an array of T's of size N. Um, so I guess that's going to be, just make me an array. Use the T and the N that we've got here. Like that's why we need these TNN here, so we can use them in code like this. And then the length is going to be zero because, whoops, because we haven't actually added anything. We just knew that we haven't pushed anything. All right, let's try it. Um, what's it saying? Expected value found type parameter T. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, okay. I did it wrong. So. Um, when you're creating an array, you don't say the type here. You say what what values are going to be in it and its length. So this part's okay. The length is okay because n is a u size, and that's what we need. But here, the re this this helps us understand why we needed this. Um, needed to make sure t was a default type because we would need to be able to call the default associated function on t to say. Um, uh, create uh, create a buffer, create an array of size n, which contains, the values it contains are this thing, which is the default value of t. Now, what have we done wrong? I think it's just complaining it's unused, is it? We had some kind of warning. It's gone away. That's weird. Um, my computer might be struggling slightly. Okay, yeah, so it is warning us that new is never used. So we might want to make ourselves a little main method or something that uses new. I don't like these warnings being there. Um, but it did work. It did pass. So you can construct. It, it constructs did run and pass um, because we did indeed return a stack based local storage vec of length one, length zero. Um, there's nothing in it. Fine. Um, okay. Yep, and it didn't do any heap allocation because it's on the stack. So now we're going to do the, the the next few methods, and I think it's giving us a little bit less guidance. So len returns the length, push adds an item and increments its length, and possibly moves to the heap. So that'll be interesting. Uh, pop removes from the end. Um, insert inserts an item at the given index, and of course that might also convert us into a vec, right? Remove, removes an item and shifts it and clear, resets the length to zero. So, uncomment the test cases, make them compile and pass. And look at the methods provided on a slice and a vec. Uh, and it might be this and this that we particularly need. Okay, so when we're doing things like insert and remove, especially, we're going to need some clever stuff to let us uh, manipulate those I think okay and that's all the help we get so let's do len first len should be straightforward right so um, here's our test for len by the way we might want to add more tests if we're not satisfied with these ones so um, make a vector with an array of size 3 
from a, from an array of size three and assert that its length should be three. Um, so this should fit. The point is this should fit in the local stack, and this should not fit because we're making it of size three, but the the stack is going to be only of size two on this vec. And in both cases, we should get back a length of three. Okay, so that's probably. I, I think in real life, I'd add some more tests. Like, what about the length of zero, and maybe even maybe even like very big length or something like that. Um, and also, I'd want some more tests for len after we've done a push and a pop and things like that, and make sure maybe there are maybe the. Oh yeah, well we we do. We do check the length in this case. Okay, fine. All right. So um, first of all, it's not compiling because there is no len method. So let's implement a len method. And I feel like we don't need um, we don't need copy and default to be able to implement len. So I'm going to make a new impl block. This is going to look the same as this um, for stuff that doesn't need copy and default to be defined. Right. In fact, so far we don't need copy here either, but we, I guess we will soon. Um, so we'll have a, a len method. So fun len takes a reference to self, not mutable because um, it's not going to change anything. And it's going to match on our type, isn't it? We, it's going to do two different things based on whether we are a stack or a heap. So uh, if we are a heap, then we just got a vector, which means we can just call v.len on it. And if we are stack based, then we've got a buff and a len. And actually, we don't need buff in this case. We just need len. And the answer is just len, right? Simple as that. Why is it? Oh, star len or something. Why is it annoyed with us? Oh, because that's not how you write that. You write it like that. Okay. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a warning us that it's unused, which is annoying me. Um, so, should we fix it? I could I could maybe add a little public function that does something, right? Pub use stuff. Will this work? I think this will work. Make a new um, local storage rack of let's say u8s and it's going to have it's going to have three of them let's say um, like so that's not how that works is it do you give it the type here and then this should work why are you annoyed with me because i wrote, forgot to write fun <laughs> I think I'm writing like Java or something there. C++. All right. So then we're going to just ask uh, for its length. Why don't we just assert something about its length? Like it has no length. Assert eek. All right. All right. Our warnings have gone away. Fine. We can run our tests. And the len test passes as well. So we've done the first exercise. Next, they suggest we do push. So let's uncomment the push test. Like so. Let's read it a little bit. So we make a vec with a 128 capacity in its um, local array. Um, we push, push numbers into it. Um, and it should still be on the stack at the end of that, and its length should be 128. Uh, then we push another 128 numbers onto it, um, and it should now be on the heap, and its length should be 256. Seems straightforward enough. We don't have a push method yet. So um, Now, push is going to need to be implemented, I happen to know, with at least copy defined, and possibly default. Shall we be specific and just say, I think it only needs copy. I think. So let's just, let's break up the different bits. Uh, now you may not have seen these multiple impl blocks like this before. But, um, 
Um, this is how this works, right? So we got we can have as many input blocks as we like for local storage rack. Each of them is going to, or not, potentially, and for our use case, everything is always going to have generic types here, which we just pass through here. What you could do is say, I'm going to implement, but only when n is 7. So then you just put a 7 here. You wouldn't need an n on this side at all. But in our case, um, we're going to... Oh, okay. All right, it's already showing me that that's wrong. Um, but yeah, the point is you can put different where clauses here and this, these input blocks will work differently. Basically, or the methods in here will only be defined if T satisfies the where clause that you put in here. And it needed, it turns out default needs copy. Um, I guess because we're going to immediately copy it from here into the array, right? We're going to, oh no, we're going to make one of them. And then when, as we create this array, the underlying code is going to copy them um, n times or n minus one times uh, into that array. So we need it to be able to do copy. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's why we need a default and copy to implement new. But now we're making a new input block. That's not how you write that. Um, where we're only going to require copy and we're not going to require default, I think. Let's see. So um, it's going to be fun to push. It's gonna, it, it's gonna modify self. It's gonna take in the thing to add, which is gonna be a T. And I think it's not gonna return anything. Um, now, it should, that should compile, but fail the tests now. Yes, it did. It, that's right, it did compile, but fail the tests because its length should be 128, and it wasn't. By the way, this assertion is a little bit of a complicated way of doing this. Let's have a quick look at that. So um, we could have just asserted that len was 128, right? Um, I think it might be easier, like you could do assert eek vec dot len 128, like so. Well, that's not 128, <laughs> like so. Um, and then just get rid of this part. So we could say, oh, it's definitely, it's definitely a stack and its length is 128. And that would be an easier way of putting it than combining those two things together. Let's do that. And let's do the same thing here. So this should be length 256. Um, and then we don't need this extra bit of, this is all on the match expression, right? So you, that, that if part there would be, if you were in a match clause, it would be only, only hit this, um, this, this part of the match clause if this is true. So put it, putting it inside a matches macro like that, I find a bit confusing. I'd rather break it out like that. Um, semicolon. Um, no, that should be an underscore. Okay, and I might also add some comments, but anyway. All right, so now our assertion is going to be better because it's going to say um, we got zero and we expected 128, so it's a little bit easier for us to understand. Fine. Um, and while we're here, let's also push something onto this vector to make our warning go away, like so. Okay, we need to make that mutable. All right, so our test fails because push doesn't do anything. So um, we need to, oh, we're always going to be matching on self, whatever we do here. Um, and in the heap case, it's always going to be easy. If we've got a vector, we might need some mutes in here. Let's see. The heap, the heap case is always easy, right? We just, oops. Um, whatever we do, whatever we're doing to our local storage vec, we just do that to the thing we've been given. And I guess V is already, yeah, V is already a mutable reference to a VEC. So it's already um, mutable, which is why we can call push on it. So let's just run that part. Now that still will fail, right? Because we haven't done the hard bit, which is the stack. And we still get to this to-do part. Okay, so here's the interesting and hard bit. And there's gonna be two cases in here. Either we have got space to push this thing without um, running out of space in our array, or we haven't. So let's do the easy case. If len 
is less than n. Do something otherwise to do. Right, and then what we're going to do is it going to, oops, is it going to format that? Yeah, it formats that nicely for us. Um, okay, can we just star that? Yeah. Uh, if if our len is less than n, so we've still got space for this extra item, then we can say buff brackets len equals t and len plus equals 1, right? Um, that should be Stalin, that should be Stalin. Right, so what we're saying is, if we've got space in our uh, local array, set the, the last, the, the after the last item of our buffer to be the T we've been given, and increase our length by one. And if I'm off by one here, oh, if I'm off by one here, we won't know. I need to re write a test for this. Let's get it wrong deliberately. Um, oh, let's see. Um, that should be, the star should be here. Let's get it wrong deliberately and see whether, right. Fine. Um, and I think we'll probably crash. Yeah, because the index is out of bounds. But I actually, I, I want to know I've put the right elements into this vec. So I want to do something better. So I want my push. I need another test um, called it pushes the right value in the right place in the right place. So we're going to do the same as this. Make a vec. Make sure there's space in it because we're at, at the moment we're only testing this part, and we're going to do vec dot push, and we're going to put into it, uh, let's say, uh, the number twelve, and then we need to somehow assert that the number twelve is at the initial position. So I guess we're going to need to, because we haven't actually got like a get method or anything like that yet. Well, we can assert we can assert that the len is one, right, for a start. Even though that's kind of um, it's already tested maybe in the next test, but we'll just test it here too. But what we want to do is somehow destructure to find out what's in our local storage rack. So let's just match on it. Um, and ask the compiler to help us. Uh, and this should be, this should be never happen. Panic. Um, should be uh, on stack. Uh, and then here, we should just want to assert that. So we could have done this by with, with a like, um, in fact, we should do this with a if let or a let else. Oh, this is fine. This is fine. So either it's a heap and it shouldn't be, or buff, the first thing in buff should be. 12, right? And the second thing in buff should be zero because it, we asked for it to fill it with defaults, didn't we? So um, buff buff is 128 long, by the way. So just because we haven't pushed stuff, buff is just an array. It has a fixed size. So there should be um, zeros all the way through it because we remember when we initialized um, buff, we said we don't need len, do we? Um, when we initialize this array, oh no, that's not how you write it. Um, when we initialize this array, we said use t colon colon default. So in the case of the, where t is, uh, well, what is t? t is like assumed based on this code, I guess. And this code uh, is using a 12, which I guess defaults to like an i32. So let's just be explicit here just for fun. Um, so default on i32 is zero. So let's 
So, I guess we could just, if we put back the underscore, hopefully our editor will tell us the type of T. Yeah, look, it did default to i32. I was right. Good. Okay, so, oh gosh, my editor's really confused. How do I get out? <laughs> okay. Um, I wasn't, that was me that was confused, didn't I? I didn't know you could do that. All right, so, um, uh, just for fun, I'm just making that be i32. Um, all right, so uh, it should be a stack. The first thing in the stack should be the 12 that we put in. Everything else in the rest of that buffer, which hasn't been used yet, should be zero. Our test should fail because we pushed it into the wrong place. Um, and we found a zero, we should have found a 12. So let's go back to our code and make it not completely silly. Um, and I assert that the pl right place in the buffer to put it is uh, the len position, because when len is zero, we want to put it in the zeroth position in the array, and when len is one, we want to put it in the one um, point of the array, because len is like one past the end. Oh no, rather is <laughs> len is, yeah, past the end. All right, so our test, uh, our first test does pass. Um, we do now do have a 12 in the right place, um, because we guessed right about where to put it. Um, and we panic at line 39 because we haven't done the heap case, I guess. So line 39, yeah. Oh, it's not the heap case. Sorry, the heap case was easy, wasn't it? It's the case where we don't have room. So let's write a comment here. Um, we have room in our array for one more. Um, we've run out of room. must switch to a real vec. Okay, so we're going to change our self. So we're going to star self equals a heap, which contains a vec. Uh, and a vec, I guess we need to create a vec before we write this line. I don't know, maybe... Maybe we can do, yeah, we should, we should. So that's not how you write that. This is how you write it. Um, so we need to create a, a V. So let V equal, um, well, let's say, vec, let's just be absolutely explicit. This is a vec of T and it's going to be, so we're going to turn buff into one. Well, no, what we want to do is we want to make sure we only, um, create tell it its size once its capacity so we're going to say let v equal a vec with capacity um, and the capacity we need is um, so basically len is the same as n otherwise we wouldn't be here so either n or len would be good enough we're going to say n plus one because if it was n we could still fit in the stack so the capacity needs to be one bigger. Is that sensible? Let's say that's fine. Just like it maybe we only ever push once and we get a vec with just exactly the right size. There is an argument here that we should make a vec with capacity n. And then when we push something into it, um, we'll by default, we'll uh, create one that's like twice the size or something like that. So there's room for more things coming later. That's the kind of normal behavior of vec. So you could argue that that was good, but that's basically going to make us do two things here. Create, create a vec with the right size and then make it um, double or whatever. So we're doing more work. So let's just do this. So now we've told, we've created this vec and we've said your size is, and we'll put in the type here just to be explicit. Um, your size is going to be exactly the size we need. Then we're going to need to copy in the first, um, uh, there's everything that's already in buff. So how do you do that? I think you do extend um, from um, buff. I think that's the right thing to do. Uh, this should be mutable. So now we've copied everything from buff in there. And then we can just, I think, just push the last thing in. And we know we won't um, reallocate that vector because we said what capacity it was already. So I think that's the right implementation. Uh, again, I want to check that this is actually working. So I want to add some assertions 
maybe into our new tester we've made. Uh, so let's make the capacity of this be um, one. And then when we push another one, let's push a 13 in there. Then we should, and again, I, maybe using a match here is, Match is, match is a slightly odd thing to use in tests, so I wouldn't recommend it really. Ignore everything in here and just panic saying you shouldn't have got here. Uh, should be a on heap. Heap. And then here we get hold of a vec and we'll make some assertions. So it should be a vector of size two. And the first thing in the vector should be 12 and the second thing should be. Oh, I'm not, I'm now getting, I think we should make this a bit bigger. So we'll make it size four and we'll push four things on here, right? 13, 14, 15, uh, oops, 15 and 16. So it should be a vec of size five. And the first thing in it should be 12 and so on. 13, 14, 15, 16. Like so. And you might want it to compare like it against some kind of array or something like that. Um, but I'm just, I like to just know exactly which line failed, right? So I like to just break up my sessions. All right, when we run this, what happens? Um, oh, right, well, we changed this, didn't we? So that should be, at one point, this buffer, we, we had 128 there, so this would have um, been right, but then it's wrong. So run our tests again, and they pass. So that slightly worries me. So let's just make absolutely sure that this test is even running at the way I expected. Yes, 15, 18. So, uh, it looks like we did the right thing. So our implementation here was correct. Let's go back to where, it was, where we wrote it. So what push says is, if we're already a vec, just push onto the vec. Otherwise, if we're on the stack and we've got space, then add this T that we've been given to the end of our space and increase our length by one. Uh, if this is the moment where we've run out of space in our stack-based implementation, then we need to switch over. Um, so make a new vec, copy the stuff out of buff, um, add the extra one, and then re return a heap type of thing. Or not return, change ourself into a heap. So this might look a bit weird to you, by the way. But essentially, we're saying, give me, a, I've got a mutable reference to self, so I can kind of replace myself by saying star self equals, and this thing, that's how you do that. Okay, uh, and we are gonna take a break there. All right, we're back. Uh, we've just implemented push, uh, got all that working. So let's have a look what's next. So the next test that we've got and the next task we need to complete is we need to implement, it pops. So let's uncomment this test and read it. Um, so basically we make a local storage vec which contains a, um, which has a, an internal cache type thing of size 128 of i32s. Uh, and when we pop it, the answer should be zero because I guess, yeah, this is filled with zeros. The answer should be zero. Um, and we need to, yeah, every time we, we pop it 128 times, every time we should get back zero. The last time we should get back none. Um, what else? Uh, then if we make one that is too big to fit in the cache, we pop it 256 times, we get back zero every time. And the last time we get back none, so it's empty. And if we make one that's too big, from a vector, um, then the same thing happens. So this is our way of kind of saying, yeah, this is 
I'm not sure why we're doing these two cases. I guess maybe they could work out differently. Um, but they're both going to result in us having a vector stored internally. Anyway, all right, so there's no pop method, so it doesn't compile yet. Um, let's just confirm that. It doesn't compile because there's no pop method. Um, it doesn't exist on something else, which is not our thing. Um, but that's okay. So let's ask the compiler to help, but it doesn't want to help. So let's write our own pop method. Shouldn't be too hard, right? So, do we need copy to exist in order to implement pop? I'm thinking probably not. So let's do it in this simple block where we're not putting any requirements and then we'll see whether we might realize we do have requirements on it. So there's going to be a, a function called pop, takes a mutable reference to self, returns an option of whatever type of thing we store. And what well, the semantics of pop is that it, it gives you back the last thing. So, like with all of these things, we're going to have to match on self and do something different depending on whether we're a local storage rec, whether we're on the stack or on the heap. Um, so, if we're on the heap, it's simple, like always. Um, if we've got, we're holding onto a vector, we just do, we just do a vector pop. Job done. Um, but if we're held on the stack, um, we need to be able to modify ourselves so I think we want to match on a mutable reference to self no um, itself is already a mutable reference so that's fine um, so we've got a buffer which I think we're not going to modify I think we're just going to reduce len by one I think uh, well no we need to return something as well so reduce len by one and then return, uh, so we are going to use buff, we're going to return the thing that's in buff at position len, I think. The test will help us know if we're wrong. Uh, we need to star this and star this. Now, the logic I've got here is reduce len by one, um, meaning that len is now pointing at the thing that's one past the end, which is the thing we've just removed from our list. So we can then use len. Um, oh, now we've got a problem here, haven't we? We're not covering the case of when the thing is empty. Um, I guess we need to... Uh, okay, it needs to be copy in order for us to return this thing, so... Pop needs to move out of here into the input block where we know that T is copy, and then we should be okay. This is where we know that T is copy. Um, but we've got a bug, because what about when you can't do this? You can't reduce this um, by one because it's already zero. So we're going to have a test failure, hopefully. Let's see. Let's check. It'd be nice if we did, wouldn't it? Yes, it panicked because we attempted to subtract with overflow. Good. Uh, now, we've got a warning as well. Oh, uh, the method's not used, so let's just quickly use it in our main method, shall we, to make that go away. Um, where did I write that main method? Did I do it right at the end? I thought I did it right at the beginning. Oh, here, use stuff. Let's put this right at the top. I don't know why I made it quite so difficult for myself to find it. Uh, and let's just do a vector pop here. Make the warning go away. So we've got a bug, which is, what about when len is zero? So I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, if we're already empty, then pop is going to return none. Otherwise, we're safe to remove one from len because we've just checked that len is not zero. And we can do that. Again, I've got to star this len. Now I feel like maybe I should do this. Can I do this? To get rid of all those stars? No. <laughs> oh no, I, 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 I guess uh, I could say 
Is there a, is there a thing? Did you say Revlon? Was that the other way round? No, that didn't work. I feel like maybe it's. Is it that? <laughs> or the other way? No, it's not. Definitely not this. Definitely not this. I'm going to give up on this in a second. <laughs> All right. So, if you in the comments, if you know what I could have done, I'm thinking of uh, when I've got a closure, I can just put an ampersand um, before the len hit. Oops, that should be a star. Um, I could put in a closure. I can put an ampersand before my argument, and it kind of matches on a reference to it and gives me back the dereferenced thing as my variable. Um, that was a waste of your time. Apologies. Um, so we think that might be the correct implementation. Let's see whether our tests pass. Yes, they do. Now, do are we happy that the tests cover? I mean, we're not really covering the fact that we pop the last thing in the list, are we? So I would like to adjust this test a bit. And actually, we can do that. We can, rather than adding a new test, I think we can just um, do this. We can say instead of putting in um, a zero every time, let's put in. And I won't just put in i because what if um, what if we were somehow returning the index or something like that? Then this test would still pass. Um, but yeah, so oh, the whole, this is not when we're populating it. This is when we're um, uh, when we're checking it. But yeah, so I think basically what I would like to do is say um, the numbers in here shouldn't all be zero, which is what we're doing here. They should be like a thousand plus the index in the in the vec. So let's let's populate this thing manually, like so. So instead of um, uh, like just creating one with all zeros, let's pop populate it by pushing. So I think what we want to say is, did we make a new method? I think we made a new method, right? So just say, make it empty at the beginning, push in 128 things, pop them all off and they should all be what we just pushed in. And then after that, there should be a none. And just for good measure, let's um, pop twice just to make sure that works. And then in one of these cases, I want to do the same thing, I think. Uh, like so. And the other one. Oh, this is a bit harder, isn't it? Because, well, I guess not. I guess not. Let's test the case. This actually kind of exercises the code a bit more. Let's test the case where we started out with it as a as a cache uh, stack version, like in this case, it's a, it's a stack of our size 128. We do a load of pushing. Oh, I've copied the wrong loop. <laughs> um, I should be doing this. Um, we do a load of pushing until at some point halfway through, it becomes a vec based one. And as we pop it, it was going to remain a vec based one. We don't have anything to like switch back to the local cache. If that happens, um, so this is still testing the vec-based code, but and let's just make it be this. And I'm going to leave this like this to check this test fails, and then we'll look in a sec. But yeah, so, and so it's it's now a vec a vec-based local storage vec because we've done these 256 pushes, and then as we pop them out, they should still have the values in that we put in in the order. That we're expecting, and oh, okay, I've already got this wrong, right? This order is not right because um, we're pushing them in. So the first one in the list will be a thousand, and the last in the list will be a thousand and twenty-seven. So this we should expect to pull them out in the opposite order. Thousand one hundred twenty-seven, sorry. So it should be a thousand hundred twenty-seven minus i. Oops. Right, because we're we're popping them starting at the end, so that should come out like that. And then this should be let in a minute. We'll first we'll make this test fail, and then we'll change it to be two thousand one hundred twenty-seven minus i here. All right, let's run our test. Check they fail. You always got to check your test fails, right? Um, oh yeah, not yeah, two thousand two hundred fifty-five minus yeah. All right, so it did fail, and it told me that I, what I was about to type was wrong. But yeah, so we expect to pop them and they come out in the same order um, 
the, the kind of the reverse order that we push them in, like so. Now it passes. Okay, so um, we did we did pop them in the right order, and I think that's a sufficient validation of that. By the way, I would really like these tests to a be separated into. I don't know why there's three uh, three tests in one here, and I'd also like some comments that explain a little bit more, um, just for just to show you the kind of comments I do, just in case it's interesting. Let's do that for one of these three cases. So let's, I, I tend to write given when then, which is like a BDD style. Um, so I'll say given a VEC, a, a stack based VEC or local storage VEC um, with uh, con containing I don't know, what is it? Containing items, let's say. Uh, when I pop the, all the items, pop the items off. And then there's two then parts here. And the, the when and the then are kind of mashed together. But yeah, then they um, are provided in the reverse order. And then you could say and after they are all gone, we receive none. Something like that, right? So that I try and break it up into given some starting state. When I do something, then I can assert that something is true. Uh, it's a bit of a mess because the when and the then are, are mashed together here because the pop is um, mixed up with the assert, which might might lead us to slightly change this test or might not. Anyway, almost all of my tests have comments that start with these given when then words and maybe some ands. And uh, it's a kind of, it's a nice discipline, I think. Helps you make sure that you're not, if you end up writing a whole other, like I would have to write a whole load, load of other comments here. And the point is, well, actually, that should probably be a separate test then, shouldn't it? Which, by the way, it's not, it's not a burden in this case, at least. It's pretty easy. I just put a curly bracket. Um, I give a clear name. Like, I don't like these names either. So this would be, um, uh, I don't know, stack based vec pops in reverse order or something like that. And this would be um, 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 heap based from stack based right because it starts off pops in reverse order and I've noticed that I'm missing out the fact that it does this none part at the end so then at some point names become too long right so um, I should I missed the it's not as easy as I made it look because I missed something right you need the test annotation here but it did warn me it was unused so. um, yeah at some point your name is too long um, and so maybe there's a better way of putting it, or maybe you just miss out some minor part. You, um, what I try and avoid is saying, like, it works, or, you know, something like that, right, which is what, how these tests are known, so I slightly object to that. All right, so that was pop. Now let's have a look at inserts. Um, and this will be interesting, won't it? This is going to be a little bit harder in our stack-based world. Okay, so... How does this work? We we make a local storage vec which is stack based. It has three items in it and it's a space for four. We insert something at index one, and we just basically then assert on the local, the internal state of our local storage vec. We say it's definitely stack based, and we stuck a three in at index one, and the stuff after it is afterwards, and it didn't turn into a vec based one. And then we're going to say, well, if we go off the end, we have, we've already filled up our stack-based storage. We're going to insert one. Well, then it's got to turn into a vec, a heap-based one. And um, we can view it as a, a slice and see that it, 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 the three got inserted in the right place. Kind of like that to be a seven or something to help me see what's going on a bit more clearly. Um, and then if we've got a vec based one, like a heat based one already, we insert something, well, then it just gets inserted. And again, let's just make that be 
Let's make this be a 9, shall we, just to make it stand out and make sure that we've not got any bug where we hard-coded a 3 or something like that. Okay, so now, why is as ref causing us a problem? Have we not implemented as ref? Um, and we know we haven't implemented insert. So, let's, I thought we'd done, is there some kind of as ref in there or not? It seems an odd time for the exercise to force us to write as ref. But we can do that if needed. Fine. Well, let's do it. Let's do it. I've lost all of my compiler warnings and errors just by saving. That's weird, isn't it? Try and restart our thing and see if it comes back. Seems a bit sad. What's going on? Well, it's working fine here. All right, we'll have to just work compile, uh, command line compiler if it continues to be troubled. All right. Uh, so, how are we going to add our insert? Oh, let's, should we do our asref first? Yep, there's no asref. Fine. So, um, in order to, all right, well, if we're going to do that, we need a test for it, right? So, just before our insert test, let's just do a quick, um, can view as ref to slice, something like that. And um, we better make at least two, oh, let's just say can view stack based. And I just want to say, I want to abbreviate here, let us v. Is that okay? It's not okay. Local storage. By the way, this is how I name my functions, thanks to Kevin Henney. Um, oh, he doesn't like that though. Um, like essentially, try and put a sentence describing the kind of customer requirement you need in a test name. Fine, so let's make a vec. First of all, let's make one that uh, fits inside a stack, because this is this test is stack-based. Um, so let's just say, this is very simple, right? It's just given, uh, given a stack-based local storage vec, when I view it, it as a slice, then its contents are in the slice or something like that, right? And then we're just going to, and this has driven us to write this in a couple more lines maybe. So the slice is going to be, its type is going to be a reference to i32 slice equals vec dot as ref. And this is not mutable, I think. And then we can just assert that slice looks like this. Um, zero, one, two, right? Something like that. And it's saying there's no as ref. Oh, look, I've got my compiler is back. Um, so let's write the as ref code. So this is going to be somewhere around here where we're implementing traits. So it's going to be input as ref, and it's going to be um, a reference to an array or a slice. It's going to be a reference to a slice, right? So we don't put the ampersand here because um, oops, um, because the as ref is going to add in an ampersand when we get to there, I think. Um, and we're going to need to take in generic type arguments. So this should be an asref of slice of t, right? I think. Is that how you write that? Let's try. It feels like it's understood that sufficiently to write as an asref. So maybe this is right. And let's, well, let's leave the to do in for now. And just see if I've written basic code that kind of makes sense. Um, oh, and this should be, um, that's not how you write that. You have to write, if it's a, if it's a, not a type, you have to specify that like this. 
So, N is a use size, we provide it to local storage rack. We've got a warning. Oh, insert's not used, let's just use it. No, 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 sorry, no, that's a warning that we haven't written insert yet, which we know. Okay, so we might need to comment out our test that doesn't compile, right? Um, for one second. Yeah, the name of that test is making me sad. Okay. Um, oh, I need to comment out one more line. Like so, and our test fails because we, it hits the to-do that we made. So it looks to me like we've got the syntax of the as ref stuff about right, and now we just need to implement it. So just like everything else, it's going to be a match on self. And there's two cases. And if, uh, if we've got a vector in, as usual, it's easy. We're just going to say, I think the safest thing to do is just say call asref, just call through to the um, equivalent method. We probably could have just done ampersand v. It might work too. Not sure, but I prefer the other way anyway. Right? Like we're in the asref. Whoops, oops. Uh, we're in the asref method. Yeah, we're here. Um, so let's let's make it clear that we're just delegating this asref call through to the underlying vector. Um, but then in the case of us being stack based, I think we just, all we need to do is return a slice of T and buff is a vec of T. So we should be able to just return um, buff. And in fact, we're ignoring this so we can just do dot dot here to say, I don't care about anything else inside this struct like thing. So yeah, the, what happened then was self is always already a reference to self. So this um, match statement gives us buff and buff is already a, a reference to that array and a reference to an array can be coerced as a slice of the, that type. So this is allowed as our return value. So does it pass the test? Um, I, did I make a bug in my test? No. Ah, oh, we have, we've got a bug in our code. And I've just realized I didn't write the test for the VEC based one. So we better do, do that too. Um, so let's write this test and, um, hopefully this test will probably pass immediately, but let's make sure. So let's just say if we make the size of our, um, local storage VEC small enough, this is going to be heap based because this, there's too many elements here to fit in this two. Um, so that test should already pass, I think. So we should have still one failure, but um, the stack based vec, but no, where is it? Uh, can view stack based local storage as a ref to slice, but can view heap based local storage ref to slice passed. Okay, so we're all right there. We better just double check the test is really checking what we think we're checking by making it fail. Yep, now we've got two failures. Three is not two put that back and fix our bug. So I was wrong about how to implement as ref. It's not good enough to just say buff. We need to say, um, take a slice of buff up to len. And I guess we need this another ampersand here. And we didn't ask for len, so that's not gonna work. Right, so buff is an array of size n, which is not good enough. We need a slice of size len, which is why our test failed. And I'm very glad we did a test which tried a non-empty buff, or we would not have found that bug. Okay, so now I've implemented as ref, and our test is passed. We can go back to implementing insert, which use the test for which uses as ref. Um, so let's try that. And again, it doesn't compile because we don't have an insert method. And we probably need copy again. So let's implement our insert method in that, that input block, which assumes, uh, that which specifies that T is copy. So we're going to have a function called insert, which is definitely going to take a mutable reference to self. And it's also going to take um, an item of type T. 
And I don't think we're testing that it returns anything, so we'll just have it not return return unit for now. And we'll check that that compiles. Um, takes two arguments. All oh, right, of course it does, because it takes the item and the position. And which order are they in? Position and then item. So let's say index, um, which is a U size, I guess, and then an item of type T. Check it compiles. Uh, hang on. Did that pass? What did I do wrong? See, this is why you always check that your tests are running. Because it's not running because I missed out commenting out that. So that, that's the kind of thing. You don't check your tests are running. They're probably not running. Okay. So that's why you've always got to have your test fail. That's a really good example for you. That never happens. All right. So, um, except, of course, when you at least expect it. Okay. So we've got to do an insert. And again, as always, there's going to be a match on self. And as always, we're going to let the compiler do the work there. And if it's a vec, it's easy again, as always. Almost feels like there's some pattern we could follow here, but I'm not sure what it is. Um, ah, they, uh, in vec calls this element. So let's just rename this to element, shall we? So we match how vec talks about things. Um, okay. So that is covering the vec case. Now we've also got to cover the, um, case where stuff is inside, uh, fits inside the stack. And we've got definitely got two cases in there, which is, have we got room or not? So let's write that. If len is n, well, let's say greater than or equal to len, it should never be greater. Then we've got to um, need to switch to a vec. Otherwise, um, shift, we're going to shift stuff, shift after items, right, and insert at index. And the hints gave us, I'm sure there were some hints right there. Um, now this should be star len. And what we can do, I think we can reuse some code to switch it to a vec, can't we? How do we switch to a vec here? We did this. Uh, maybe we're not going to reuse it because this is a push code. I guess we could push it and then swap it into the right. No, 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 we, well, that wouldn't work. Let's copy this code. And then we're going to do something a bit different, but it's still kind of easy because we need a vec anyway. So we may as well use the vex uh, cleverness to do our insert for us. So we make a vector with the capacity n plus one again, um, just like when we were pushing, because it's the same thing. Um, then we fill that vec with our stuff, and then we insert. Oh, that's a bit inefficient, that isn't it? So instead of that, let's split our buffer in two, and then we can do, yeah. So first we're gonna push in all the stuff before uh, the index where we're inserting it. Then we're gonna put in our element. And then we're gonna put in everything after, in from the buffer after that index, right? Um, and this should be, these are slices, so they need ampersands. So I think that's right, but we, we um, just before we get any further, let's double check that our tests are going to check that we didn't mess up the indexes like with an off by one error or something like that. So this is the case where we used to be stack based and we're becoming vec based, uh, heap based because we ran out of space. So we need to make sure we've got a test for that which is this test. Yeah, so currently we're stack-based. We insert, it's going to switch us to a heap. 
and we check that we got, did insert stuff in the right place. So that's good. Uh, we've got a test case covering this, so I feel okay about writing that slightly hairy code. Um, now where's our implementation of insert? Yep. So that this hairy code, I would if I didn't have a test that I knew made sure I wasn't off by one here or here, um, I would be very worried and have to write one. But we've got one, so it's good. And then we're in the situation where um, we're not switching to effects, so we have to do a bit more work ourselves. And they gave us a hint, didn't they, in the um, exercise? So let's switch to the exercises. And it says, look up copy within or extend from slice. Ah, so we've used extend instead of extend from slice. Um, that might be a bit interesting. Maybe we can do better. Rustvec extend from slice. How is extend from slice better than extend? Ah, well, because it's a method on vec instead of a method on. Where's just vec extend? Oh, it imp yeah, implements extend with it. Yeah, so what's the difference between extending f from an array like this and extend from slice? Why is extend from slice better? This function is the same as extend, except it's specialized to work with slices instead. If and when Rust gets specialization, this function will likely be deprecated. So I'm guessing it's just a bit more efficient than extend. So we should use it wherever we're using a slice. In fact, Clippy, I wonder if there's a Clippy warning. Should we just, just Satisfy our curiosity. Is Clippy going to warn us that we should use extend from slice? No, it's just warning us that we never used insert. Pity. Yeah, that should that would be like if anyone wants to add something to Clippy. Let's do do an insert. Um, uh, something like this. And now insert's used. Um, if anyone wants to add anything to Clippy, maybe warn me when I use extend that I should use extend from slice. Like this. That shouldn't be buffed or iter, it should be just ampersand buffer link. Um, or just buff. Yeah, it's already a reference. It's because this is a reference to the self that comes into the match statement. Um, buff is already a reference, so we just do extend from slice here. All right. So um, if if we mess this up in some way, by the way, we've got we know we've got tests that have got our back, so we're okay. All right. So that was a distraction. Let's double check that we're still in the same state we were in before. Everything works except the insert test fails um, because we haven't yet implemented this bit. Okay, good. So extend from slice seems to be working. Now, the other hint that they gave us was uh, copy within, which is a method on... Is this a method on an array? I think it is. Or an, oh, is it on a slice? Copy within. Copies elements from one part of the slice to another part of itself. Source is the range to copy from, and dest is the starting index to copy to, which which will then have the same length. The ranges may overlap. The ends of the ranges must be before len. So we need to double check that we're not going to go past the end of our thing. I guess it's going to panic. So let's first of all make it panic to see how that looks and check that our tests are covering the case. So let's do, so shift the items right. Uh, let's say late. That confused me when I read that. Shift the later items right. So basically, we're going to modify buff, copy within, 
Um, and the thing we're going to copy is everything after our insert point. So that's index dot dot. That's a range because it takes a range. I think, I think it's going to work. Yeah, they, like there's a range here in there. Their example, um, and the destination is going to be index plus one. And then we're going to insert. We'll do the insert as well. Buff index equals element. I think it's something like that. Star buff. Missing a semicolon. All right. Yeah. So we're modifying this array that we've got a reference to, saying at that index we should put in element. We haven't checked anything about index yet, like whether it's actually part inside this array at all. So things could go terribly wrong, and we should make sure we've got tests to cover all the things we've done wrong. But the first thing is um, that dest is out of bounds because we're not checking. Uh, inserting, how does this work? Um, yeah, it's complaining about this line. We're not checking the case where we want to shift stuff, but like maybe there's nothing to shift. What is this? What is dest? Let's print out dest here. I'm surprised we hit this case, I think. So we're going to print out for the debugger. Index is one. Um, and let's write, let's run with a backtrace so we can see exactly which line of code caused um, this to fail. It was line 94. Five, that's insert. Oh, so it's line three, two, three. So this is the case where we've got we've got a buffer with three things in it, <clears throat> and we want to insert one more, and the index that we want to insert at is index number one. So we want to add a three where this one currently is. So we're copying what this one and two, uh, numbers one and two into index two and three. Uh, so I, yeah, I think I've done it wrong. But the error message is quite confusing because the error message is saying, what is the error message saying? Dest is out of bounds. I think what it means is dest is the same as the beginning of source. Oh no, no, dest is, uh, dest is index plus one, right? Um, so let's just be absolutely explicit about this. So we're going to write out our dest. By the way, just double checking dest is the second argument to copy within and Oops. So we're going to put in dest here. Print all that out. Dest is two. And how is that out of bounds? Um, well, we're copying two things. Um, are we copying two things? No. Yes, we're copying from index one which will get pick up the one, and then index two. Oh, okay, I finally got there. I hope you weren't screaming from at home. So we're saying copy everything in buff one further to the right, um, and that's wrong. We should be saying copying, every, copying everything in buff up to len. Um, which is one less than that in this particular test case. So we've accidentally made it that we always run off the end. I was trying to find a case where we run off the end in one specific case. Um, so now we've got to line three to five. Uh, so I think we've got further. Hmm. 
What complain you about? It doesn't match. So that's okay. We might, we've got another bug. It's not going well. So let's get rid of our debug statement from here because I think that's doing the right thing. Um, and let's add some debugging to our test because this assert matches doesn't actually give us anything very nice to look at. So what I'd rather do, well, for now we can just print out um, vec. What we could do is like convert this into like some into a vec or something that we can then. Um, oh, it doesn't implement debug. I mean, I wish it did. Let's make it implement debug, shall we? Um, so the way we implement debug is like this. Derive, if I can spell derive. Like so. And let's not have the back traces for the moment. Okay, so um, 0, 3, 1, 2, but len has not... Okay, all right, so, right, we'd actually got it right, but we'd missed out part of the implementation. So, good, I feel slightly less stupid. So, where's our implementation of insert? So, yeah, insert in this case. Uh, we did everything right here, and we've got a mistake here, which is that len should increase because... We've added a thing into our thing. So if our tests pass now, there's a serious problem with our tests because there is a bug in this code. Have you spotted it? It is that. Hang on, am I right? Oh, maybe, am I not right? Yeah, I, the, I'm right because if the index is uh, off the end, this is going to go badly wrong. So let's add another test, shall we? Um, and call it. So I'm glad that we found a bit where the test didn't cover things properly. Uh, inserting after well, let's do let's do inserting at the beginning works as well. Um, adds item at start. So that's going to be pretty simple. It's going to look like this. I'll just get rid of our debug statement. Um, it's going to look like this, but we'll just insert at zero. And again, we should probably do it for the multiple different cases, or at least for the case of the heap and the stack based. So let's not do this matches thing. Let's do um, assert equal, because this is going to give us better error messages. Vec.asref. This is what we did in a previous test, isn't it? Assert equal, vec.asref this. And we're going to insert a 3 right at the beginning. So it's going to look like 3, 0, 1, 2. And now I would do this as a separate test. Why don't I do it as a separate test? Um, inserting at beginning of stack adds item. Inserting at beginning of heap adds item at start. So this is in this case we're just going to make it only fit two things, so it's vec based. We insert something at the beginning. It should look like that. All of that should already pass. Looks like it does. I didn't technically check that they um, actually run. One of them doesn't run, right? Inserting at beginning. Where's the other one? Inserting at beginning of heap. Oh, and here's the other one, sorry. Inserting at the beginning of stack. So they did run. Let's just double check they are actually running by making them fail. It's not just that they're running, but that they're actually checking what we think they're checking, right? So yes, they did fail. So they are running. So we're all good. Now let's do inserting at end. And we actually will copy both of these. Or oh, it's inser inserting after end, right? Um, after end of stack adds item at end. End, I think. Now we should check whether VEX actually work this way. Um, inserting at end, after end. 
add item at end. Um, so this this one will be actually a test of how VEC works. So that's quite useful. So let's just say insert it at index number 100. So that in that case, this should go 0, 1, 2, 3, right? Should add it at the end of there, assuming it works the way I think it does. And we'll do the same thing here. This is definitely going to fail. Uh, like so. Okay, two, two tests failed. Ah, now, okay, I was wrong because the VEC based one, the heap here, says it panicked because insertion index should be less than or equal to len. And this is from an error message from VEC. So essentially, um, we panic if we insert past the end. So ideally, we would give the same mess error message that VEC gives instead of this. Um, but it's, it's it's still panicking. So yeah, our ideal implementation would would add a panic message that says exactly the same as this. But for now, I think what we can do is just say, I think there is a should panic that we can add. And we'll just say it should panic. Inserting after end of stack panics. And this makes me feel like I do need one more test, which is inserting right exactly at the end. Um, so we'll just quickly do that. So now when we run these tests, they pass because they do indeed panic and it's not checking like the panic error message, which we could do, but we won't. So let's just do inserting at the end. Now, can you do, can you insert one after the end? Does that count? Let's check by not running this test yet, but running the heap test and inserting at position. Or what it would, would it be? Zero, one, two. So it'd be inserting at position three. Um, are we allowed to insert when it's actually one past the end? Inserting at end of heap adds item at end. Now we don't know whether this work, this is allowed or not in a VEC. Uh, it seems like VEX do allow you to insert one past the end. So we should also support that. So inserting at end. Do we already? It's a good question. Does our code already um, work the way a VEC works? Okay, looks like it does. It's slightly no, that's definitely not right. This should this is not the correct behavior. Um, so is our test not really testing? Oh no, I forgot forgot to change this. Let's have it fail because it's in the wrong place. And now let's have it pass. It looks like our code already works and we should have very briefly convinced ourselves of why our code already works. Okay, that passed. So how does insert work? Why does inserting one past the end in a stack based thing work? And what about, the, there's a special case here Inserting at end of full stack. Let's do that too. Should be okay. Should convert to back. Um, so now we're going to have a full stack. And again, this is where given when then helps us, right? So given a stack based local storage vec that is full. When we insert at the end, we insert after the end. So like insert a position four, and let's just make this be a nine. Uh, then we convert to heap based and add. So that's just a good test to check as well. All right. So is that does that pass? It does. In fact, let's double check by changing something that is actually running. Yes. Does, so it's all good. So all we're left with is convincing ourselves of why this this test case passes, where we've got three things on the stack. We insert just after the end, and it just gets added, and everything is fine. So why? Well, in this case, it's we are stack based, so we come in here. Uh, len is not bigger than or equal to n yet. It's one less than because it's three, and n is four. So we work out our destination, which is um, 
one more than three. Right, what was our index? What was our index? Three. So our destination is four. So we're saying copy within, starting at three. So starting at uh, three and going up to three because len is three. So so copy nothing to the destination, uh, which is outside of our buffer. But because the range is empty, we're uh, that's I guess okay. Um, and then we say in the, into index number three. Add our new thing. So index number three is the last one. And then increase len to four, which shows that we're now full. So interestingly, we're depending on the fact that um, this copy within notices that this range is empty and doesn't complain about how dest is actually past the end of the buff, which feels a bit great. Not great, doesn't it? We could just add in, add in a check here. If um, I mean, it's like really, it's if dest is less than len, and now we're not depending on this behavior of copy within. Um, but then, is that a waste because copy within is already checking an equivalent condition? Let's see whether that still passes. Yeah, that probably feels better, doesn't it? So we're now saying don't bother doing the work of copying the stuff after us if there is nothing after us. Probably okay. Um, all right, let's take another break there. Okay, so we've implemented insert and we've got a couple more things left. A couple more commented out tests. So remove is the next. Uh, test we've got lined up. So comment that in, read the test to see what it says. So we're making a local storage vec which fits in the on the stack, removing an element. Uh, interestingly, uh, there's a debug statement here printing out the vec, um, which wouldn't have worked unless we uh, implemented debug like we did earlier. Um, and then we're asserting that. The uh, the vec is on the still on the stack and it has these two things in it. Um, so like number one got removed, which is what we told it to remove. Um, and oh yeah, and we're also asserting that we got back the one that we were expecting from when remove uh, we remove returns a value and we're checking it. It was returned correctly. And then we're also making one that doesn't fit on the stack, so it's heap based. When we remove one, it comes out looking like a a vec of the thing removed and the thing that got removed was once. And that's the easy part again. So once again, um, I'm pretty sure we need um, the elements to be copyable for remove to work. So we can put our remove method uh, in that same, same section, this section, um, this impl block where t is copy next to push pop and insert so we'll have a new function remove and it's going to return i'm guessing it's going to return an option of t I assume um, and it's going to take in an index which is probably a u size uh, and as usual it's going to be a match on self oops so obviously it needs to be a method, so it needs to take needs to take Emerson self as its first argument. And the heap case is always easy. So it's just gonna be v dot remove index. Oh we, index is the same name, that's nice, isn't it? Um, Index is the name we use, and it's also the name used here. Oh, it doesn't return an option of T, it just returns a T. So I guess if you try and remove something at the wrong place, it should panic. That's what it says here. Uh, maybe we should test for that. Okay. And then in the case of... Um, all right, yeah, this should be a mutable reference to self, obviously. So we're going to change it. Uh, in the case of the uh, value on the stack... Um, 
Well, we might need to think about what to do if uh, index is greater than or equal to len. But let's first of all think about what, what we do um, if not. So I guess we're going to need to get hold of the return value, which is going to be the thing at index. And then we're going to do another of these copy within, right? We're going to do buff.copy within. And the source is um, index to the end. And the destination is index minus one, right? No. The source is index plus one. Like, we better make sure that our tests check this properly, right? But I think it's going to be like that. And then we're going to return ret, like so. Now, we've got a warning because we're not using it. So let's just stick one in here just to make that warning go away. And run our tests. Um, right, so our test failed, and the debug statement that was in there was quite helpful. Uh, and the problem we have is that our length is wrong, because once again, we've forgotten to modify length, haven't we? So when well, after we've moved everything from one one past the index back to where the index is, we also need to. I'm going to remember the star this time. We also need to reduce our length by one. Is that going to work? It works. Okay. So things that are concerning about this: what if index plus one is outside of buff? Um, and also, what if index is outside of buff? So I guess we need some tests to check that we panic. So we did that before, didn't we? We got the should panic thing. So we should do something similar. So test should panic. Let's do the vec one first. In fact, let's remove the should panic for now. And let's see the panic message that we get from a vec. Uh, removing out of range from heap panics. So we'll make one that is using the heap and then we'll remove something that is past the end. So we'll remove number three. That should be far enough past the end. Run our tests. Um, we've got a some kind of warning. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, because we're not using it. Removal index is 3, should be less than len, which is 3. Fine. So we can just, we don't need to keep hold of that, and then we can say should panic. And then we're going to do the same thing. Um, moving out of range from stack panics. And again, we won't bother um, we won't bother checking that the panic message is the correct message. We'll just say it should panic and we'll leave it at that. So if we make something that does fit on the stack, but we remove with an invalid index, it should panic. And it does. It panics saying slice index starts at four, but ends at three. So basically it panics on um, line one, one, three. It panics here. It doesn't panic here, which is interesting. Even though it's beyond the end of this buffer for some reason. Oh no, it's not beyond the end of the buffer. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we need to check something else as well, don't we? So yeah, it correctly panics when you're looking for something that's in, within the capacity of buffer, but outside of len, which is the amount of the buffer we're currently using. But we need another test. Um, which is removing out of range, um, uh, let's say outside buffer. From a stack based thing is also, so that's basically our, our buffer here is size four. So let's remove something that like say, um, 
Actually, four should be good enough. And that should panic two. And it does. It panics with an index out of bounds on the line before. So that when we're trying to find, we're trying to look inside buff. So that's all fine, right? So that, that is because here, this number is too big to look up in buff. So I think that's okay. I think our bounds checks uh, are always, always happen even in release mode. Am I certain of that? Should we just do a quick search? Raster bounds checks in release mode. Okay, so according to this random page on the internet, uh, on the on the Rustlang forum, some runtime checks are always enabled in safe mode, including bounds checking on slice indexing, which I assume includes this um, array indexing that I'm doing here. So fine, I think we're okay. Um, that would be something we would need to double check if this was production grade code. So we've got remove working. Um, so let's do the last, I think what is the last thing in this section, which is um, clear. So the clear method should exist. So basically um, we've got one that fits in the stack. Um, this is not right. Yes, no, that is right. Sorry, it is length four. Yeah. So um, clear it, and its length should be zero. And then do one that doesn't fit in the stack, so it must be heapish. Clear it, and its length should be zero. Fine. That seems straightforward. Uh, and we probably don't need t to be copy. So let's put this in the other input block where we didn't say that t was copy. Here. So what's the interface of clear? I think it doesn't return anything. I think it's just a mutable reference to self. And again, it's going to be a match on self, isn't it? And for the heap, it's easy, like always. If we've got a vec, then we clear it. We can check the interface while we're here, can't we? Yep, it doesn't return anything. Just takes a mutable reference to self. And if um, if I'm right, I think all we need to do in here is take one is uh, set len to zero. I think I guess this needs to be in curly brackets. Let's see what it says about that. Oh, it doesn't like this. I guess we could do this. Yeah, fine. So just, it just means uh, I'm interested in len, I'm not interested in whatever else is in this thing. And we got a warning about clear not being used, so we can just run a clear here to make that go away. And are our tests immediately going to pass? I mean, all our tests check is that len is zero, right? So um, we set len to zero. Should work. And that's fine, because obviously len is not just like a kind of Indicator, it actually controls our behavior and other things like remove or whatever. Um, because we're here, because we're looking for to copy within a slice starting from index up to len, no index will be valid if len is zero because we're going to end up one with index plus one, so more than zero, dot dot zero, which is not valid. We saw that that panicked. So that's just an example of um, when you try and remove from something which has a len of zero, you will panic. So Len is doing its job. It's not just a, like a um, a piece of metadata. It's actually a piece of kind of data that's used to control the behaviour. That I may be, I may have lost everyone. Okay, so I think we've done exercise C. Let's go back and look at the instructions. So uh, clear resets the length to zero. Uncorrespond corresponding test cases make them pass. Okay, we did that, and we used copy within and extend from slice. So, next question. Iterator and into iterator. Our local storage vector can be used in the real world now, but we still shouldn't be satisfied. There are various traits in the standard library that we should implement for it that will make users of our crate happy. So first off, we'll implement into iterator and iterator. Uncomment the test, and let's define a new type, which is an iterator over the things in a local storage vector. 
and it's going to inside it it's going to hold on to a local storage vec so when you call it into iterator you take ownership of the of the local storage vec that you're calling it on and you put it inside here and this iterator then is able to iterate over it and kind of destroy it as you go if it wants to okay um so we'll make a type called local storage vec iter and we'll implement the iterator trait on it and then an into iter in a minute. So, all right. So let's read the rest of this. You need to specify the item the iterator implementation yields uh, and an implementation for next, which yields the next item. We have to make this easier by bounding t to default when implementing the iterator trait. So then you can use mem take to take an item for local storage vec. Okay. We'll do that. Um, and then look at the provided methods section. So this is the provided methods of iterator. So you only have to implement next in order to be an iterator. And then all these methods get implemented in terms of next. So you don't have to implement them, you just get them for free. So things like last, you can get the last thing in there, or count, count them. Um, what else? Get the nth one, stuff like that. And I think what they're saying is, in our case, we should probably implement some of these things, like last, uh, in a way that's better than the default, because the default will have to iterate through everything in order to get the last one. Um, knowing in the back of your head what methods there are greatly helps improving your efficiency in programming with Rust. Which of the provided methods can you override in order to make the implementation more efficient? Um, yeah, so exactly. So last is a good example, right? And to instantiate local storage vec iter, implement the into iter trait for it in such a way that calling into iter yields a local storage vec iter. So I think it means implement into iter on local storage vec, I think. So let's see what the tests look like. I may be able to understand them a bit better. So where are our tests for this? Um, uh, just one. So again, we might want to add more, but we'll see. So we make a local storage vec that all fits in the stack. We call into iter on it, and that gives us uh, an iterator which we can iterate over, and each item we assert will be zero. Uh, and then once we've gone through them all, if we call it next on it, It'll give us back none. That's the thing that indicates we've got to the end. So actually, we wouldn't have stopped this loop if we hadn't already returned none. But anyway, and then one that uh, also fits on the stack. So this seems wrong. This should be. Let's make this smaller. Um, so this doesn't fit onto the stack. We should be able to call into iter on it and again iterate through, get all the items out and get none at the end. Now I would like to do the thing we did before, which is put more than just zeros in here. So instead of putting zeros in here, I want to do a quick loop. Oops. I want to do a quick loop. Um, like so. And we'll just say, we'll do it slightly differently. No, we'll do it the same way as before. We're going to do vec.push. Um, and we're going to do 3000 minus i. Right? And then well, this can just be vec um, local storage vec new. Um, so we know there's going to be 32 of them. And now this is going to be. Um, Yeah, we pushed them all, so the last one is going to be 3,000 minus 32, and we're not popping, so we're going to look at them in the same order we saw them. So again, it's going to be 3,000 minus i, and in order to have an i, we need to do... Um, what if we just do um, enumerate on that? It going to let us do that? It doesn't know. It doesn't know what type this it has yet, so it can't tell us that whether or not that's right. This is going to be. So if this works, it's going to look like this. We'll see in a minute when we've actually got an into it method. It's going to give us more sensible errors. 
And here we'll do the same type of thing. We're going to push in 128 things this time. Um, and it's, this one is going to start off on the stack and eventually once we've pushed enough stuff it's going to be on the heap. And again we'll do the same, same assertion as before. So there may be bugs in what I've just written, we'll find out in a second. Let's change this number just to be absolutely sure we're doing different code. Again, I would break this into two tests normally. Don't know why we've got it all mashed together in one. All right, so there's no into iter method on vec. So let's write one. So um, not sure which impl block we're going to need, but they did mention assuming that you had default and copy. So yeah, I don't know. So I think what we need to do, and I'm never sure about this, but I think what we need to do um, is implement the into iter trait. Into iter. Into iter for local storage vec t comma n. Let's see whether this makes sense when it offers us a method. Okay, we definitely need. Oh no, this is not right. All right, so I think. Okay, that's not it. So is, we need an Intuiter method on our local storage vec. Let's read what it says again. It's not these the Intuiter that we saw getting auto completed for us there was specific to each type. So it would be a local storage vec colon colon into iter. Um, and I'm not sure what that means. So let's look up into iter and see what type of thing it is. That's not searching the way I would like it to. <laughs> Please search. So for example, um, let's say vec has an into iter. It's a struct. Yeah, so I'm not understanding the difference between a struct, which is called into iter, and the and the struct that we're already expecting to make, which is called local storage vec iter. So let's see if we can figure this out. So I think what we'll do is we'll just blunder ahead and try and do a local storage vec iter. I'm just wondering whether, if we look at the source code of into iter, is it a bit like this thing we're making now? Does it hold on to a vec? No. And what methods does this into iter have? Things like as slice. This is implementing this is just the implementation of into iter itself. And does it, do we also implement iterator for into iter? We implement as ref a slice. Okay. Oh, and yeah, here we implement iterator for into iter. I think that's what we're going to do for this thing called local storage vec iter, right? We're going to implement iterator for it. Yeah, we are. Okay, so maybe that's the same type of thing, it's just a clearer name. Um, we'll try and clear up our confusion about that as we go. So, let's go past all the input blocks for local storage vec. Um, so we're still in input blocks for local storage vec. And let's paste in what the question gave us, which is this thing called a local storage vec iter. So this is an iterator that owns a local storage vec. Um, and um, also has a counter in it, which is one way of implementing this, which I guess we'll use. Um, and then we know that we're going to need an into iter method on local storage vec. So let's just put that in one of the input blocks. I think maybe this one, which has default and copy. Uh, and now this might move, but for now, into iter 
takes a self, it consumes a self, so it's not a reference to self, it consumes self and it returns a local storage vector iter. Um, which I'm not sure whether it does it take, yeah, it takes t and n, so we're going to need those. And let's say it just returns one of these, which we construct by using self, right? We just, we'll imagine it has a new function, um, which allows us to create it. Um, and then we'll make that, generate new function. I don't know why my code generation is such a mess at the moment. Um, so it's generated this thing for us. It's, um, it's going to, like usual, it's going to take t and uh, const n u size, which takes t and n. So uh, just again, just to emphasize, this is like, this means this code I'm right about to write requires you to provide t and n. And this is like, oh, well, I'm talking about a local storage vector, so I need to give a t and an n, but it's okay. I was given one here. So these are like input, and these are kind of like output. Like these are the parameters you need in order to make, to even talk about a local storage vector. Okay, which means, um, which means we don't need to specify them here. Um, and we basically we're being given a local storage vector iter and it returns self. Let's just write self here. And the where clause, I guess we might want that same where clause here saying t is the has default and copy. And we're going to return a self and self has vec which let's just call this argument vec, shall we? And it has counter, which we will set to zero. So I'm, I'm assuming this counter is like, how far have we iterated through this vec so far? So we'll start off with counter being zero. Right, so now what are you moaning about? Um, it doesn't implement iterator. So our test is moaning at us because um, we, we called into iter and then we tried to iterate through it and it doesn't implement iterator. So we can do that. Um, but let's also just use this code before, before we get told off. So we won't get warnings later. Right. So we're going to have to implement iterators. The whole point, the whole point of this thing. So it just, if you're not uh, familiar with implementing iterators, it's an odd thing, right? So, um, in Rust, you can have iterators which just refer to some data um, and let you iterate through it. And you have other iterators which actually own that data. And when you call into iter, um, you own the data. Into means destroy the thing I'm calling this method on. Give me back an iterator that owns that data. And sometimes that's what you want, right? Because you want to own it um, while you're walking through it to do something with it. Um, so that's the type of iterator we're making here. And this class that we're, this struct that we're defining is the thing that owns the data. It's owning a vec, in, a local storage vec in this case. Um, and we are going to implement the trait iterate on it, and that is what is going to allow us to do a for loop. So let's just look at that. So we're looping through iter, um, and well, in this case we're calling enumerate on iter, which suggests that it has to be an iterator. So um, we need to, uh, this after calling into iter, we've now got a local storage vec iter. Um, and in order to call enumerate on it, that thing needs to implement iterator. So that's our next job. Uh, and also that would be the same if we wanted to, um, if we just wanted to do a for loop directly through the local storage vec iter, it would have to implement iterator. So import iterator for local storage vec iter. And again, we're gonna need this type of business So here's where we're going to get to the bit about next. So in order to implement iterator, you need to implement a next method. And you need to say what type of item your iterator produces. So in our case, that's easy, right? The iterator produces things of type T because our VEC has got things of type T in it. And then um, we need to implement the next method. Now there's a load of other methods you get for free, like last, nth, stuff like that. 
um, which we could definitely implement much better than just the the default implementation, which calls next. Like to get this, there's this function called nth, um, which gives you, I guess it's like something like this. Return to t, or maybe an option of t or something. Uh, I'm not even sure it does uh, uh, does return a t. The point is, because we know more about the vec than just that you can call next on it, like the default implementation would have to say, um, like loop around calling next lots of times until you've called it i times and then return the answer. Whereas we could do something much cleverer, like go to the seventh thing in the vec and return it. So that's what we're talking about with why we could implement more methods on this to make it more efficient. And we'll get to that. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. First of all, let's implement next. So uh, the logic of an iterator is it gives you back the thing you're pointing at now and it increments the counter by one. So let's just do that. So ret will be um, self.vec brackets counter and we have to think about the case where we've got gone off the end in a second. So get hold of the thing at index counter. Is that going to be allowed? Uh, no, because we never wrote indexing. But what we can do is um, treat it as a slice and look for the counter thing through the slice. Um, and then we're going to return rest at the end. But the, first, the other thing we need to do is increase counter by one plus equals one. So yeah, we look up look up the thing at where counter is currently pointing. And this counter starts off at zero. We're going to return that, and then um, then we in increment our counter by one. Can we just do that, or do we need a star? Might just star. Uh, T should implement copy, so we need to say where T is copy. And it said we should also check out when it's default. So let me think about that for a second. So it says, you'll be able to make this easier by bounding T to default when implementing its rate of trait, and then you can use std mem take to take an item. So we're copying it out here. So if we do default instead, and we can just say, I guess we can do what they suggested. I don't know how to use std mem take. We'll have to have a look at that. Um, yeah, I guess this will need to be, this would need to be still self.counter, right? This seems a little odd. Like, I think probably what we need to do is match on, uh, the type of vec and do different things based on whether it's, um, on the stack or on the heap. So I liked my implementation, right? Which works, um, as so long as t is copy, which we've specified in various other places, it works for both uh, implement both types of vec stack and heap. So we just call it as ref, and uh, uh, that works for both stack and heap based vec, uh, local storage vecs. And then once we've got it, we're viewing it as a slice. We can just copy out the thing at this location. So this should work. So shall we try our tests, and then we'll think about whether we want to implement it differently. Well, first of all. Um, oh, we missed out some mutes in the test, so let's fix that. So now that we're doing, now that we're constructing this thing in multiple steps, the vec needs to be mutable. So that should fix that. Now, um, okay, um, what if we did this? So my enumerate is causing me problems. So to make life simpler, let's not use enumerate because I'm, I'm deviating too much from um, 
how they wrote this test originally. So we'll just we'll do it the dumb way instead of using enumerate, and we'll just say let's iterate through the way they originally wrote this test like that. Same thing here. Um, we won't bother with this enumerate thing. It's just making our life more complicated. Let's do another. Let's let's shadow i with another i. Um, that should be mutable. All right. So basically, what I've done there is gone back to how they wrote the test, which is you just loop through the um, iterator like so, and then we can still refer to it later because we only took a mutable reference to it here. And then separately, we're making uh, keeping a counter, so just so that we can assert the right thing because I wanted that. Um, now let's. Now I think we've got. Yeah. So. Um, we're closer now, but I, I deliberately didn't implement part of what we needed, which was, so Intuitor looks right, uh, and New looks right, but then when we're going next, what did we miss? Well, we missed the fact that counter might have already, we might have already finished iterating. So we need to cover that. If counter um, is outside, I guess it's just if counters beyond the end of the vec, do something. Otherwise, do what we did. And what we do is just return none. It should be self.counter. Yeah, that should be good enough, right? Okay, so our tests pass, but it sounds to me like they don't want us to implement it this way. They want us to do something cleverer which I think will require us to um, jump inside the implementation instead of just calling as ref, just building our iterator code on top of our other code. I think what they want, we'll just experiment with this. We won't take too long over it, but let's just step inside the implementation of VEC um, and in the heap case, again, it's always easy, right? We just um, well, it's not, we still need to incorrect counter, right? But we can at least return um, v bracket self dot counter, right? Oh, but then it needs to be copy. So I guess we need to do. I guess we need. We would need to do. So let's let's structure this the same way we did before. Get hold of a return value, increment counter, and then return the return value. And I think we're going to need to use std mem take. This is going to be looking at a mutable reference to the vec. I think now if we do std mem take. Wow, I typed that badly. of this, is that going to be allowed? Stud mem take, what does it take? It takes in a mutable reference to a thing that we're going to replace with default. So maybe it should be this. Yep, and then we need to say, okay, that's encouraging because that implies to me that it's going to work. Okay, this looks like this might work. Um, I kind of prefer my other implementation, but that, that requires copy. That this, this only requires default. So this is going to be something similar. So I don't think we need len. Because we already know that counter is less than len. So this is going to be something like std mem take of And then maybe we could do this using as a ref. Okay, let's run the tests. Yeah, they pass, good. So the then the even cleverer way would be a combination of these two approaches, right? Will this work? Let's try std mem take. I'll try and explain what std mem take does in a second. And mute of self.vec.asref 
Well, it should be asmute ref. Do we have an asmute ref? I don't think we implemented one. Let's try. Let's try. Um, brackets self dot counter. Let's comment this out. Stood mem take. Hard to type that. And it doesn't like it because as ref is not a mutable reference. And I don't think we implemented as mute ref, right? If we'd implemented as mute ref, I think we could do this form. Let's leave it in this form and be happy and explain what uh, std mem take does. So what std mem take does is you give it a mutable reference to something and it gives you back that thing. You own it, right? Because it re the return type is T and it replaces the thing because you can't just like take it and then um, leave nothing there because you've only got a mutable reference. You don't own it. What it does is replaces it with a default one of that, which is why T needs to be default for this to work. Um, so it gives you the thing and replaces it with just some other thing that was created by calling default. And that's how we end up being allowed to do that. So we give a reference to this thing deep inside our buffer and it just gets replaced with the, the default version. Um, and yeah, maybe, I'm not sure whether their uh, intention was that we should write std mem take twice or whether we could have done better, but I think we would have needed that as mute ref implemented, which we haven't done yet, um, but we could. Um, it'll be almost the same as as ref and then it would be fine. Either way, this follows what they said. And as we saw before, if we'd made T copy instead of default, then we could have just copied out and we could have used as ref to do that. So that might be a nice implementation. Is it harder to implement default or copy? Uh, yeah, copy is probably harder, like rarer. Okay, so what else? Let's look at these provided methods, like they say, and discuss which things we should implement to be really efficient. Um, which thing should we implement? So we had to implement next, and we did. But then there's next chunk, which is nightly only. Let's ignore that. Size hint. So we definitely know the size of our vec, so we could return len, couldn't we then? Yeah. Um, and that would be much more efficient than having to like walk through everything. Obviously, count. So size hint, by the way, is like, please, if you if you are the kind of thing that knows about size, please give me back the size. But don't destroy, like it's, it only takes a reference to self. So it doesn't actually iterate to do this. It just says, please, can you tell me? And if you can't find, just return none. Um, why does it return two things? Um, a tuple. The first element is the lower bound and the second element is the upper bound. Okay. So we would return zero comma none if we didn't know. In our case, we would return zero comma len because we do know. And then count actually uses up this iterator and all it does is finds out how many there were and it throws away the items. So again, we wouldn't need to bother stepping through by calling next, which is what the default implementation of count does. Let's look at the implementation of count. So hopefully this makes more sense. Nope. And not unless you know what a fold is. Fine. Well, um, this, this effectively walks through them all, counting them, uh, and tells you how many there are. Um, cool. I guess. And then last, the last one, which again, we could do quickly because we know how long we are. Advanced by, we would just add a number to count, right? So we could implement that really, um, cheaply. Nth is give me the one that's like five in or whatever. So again, we could do that very quickly by just incrementing, I increasing count by n and then re returning the ne next. Step by just means, oh, it's a new iterator that this time has a step size of five instead of uh, one, as in it jumps forward five at a time. So um, we could implement that, but it would be probably be better to just use the one that the default one chain links it to another iterator. I'm not sure we'd want to implement that zip matches up pairs with this iterator and another one. So we don't want to do that. Intersperse. Oh, yeah, that, that means that we get that the other iterator, then the, then others, then the other iterator, then us, I guess. Oh, intersperse just means um, return this actual item multiple times, like zero. So the hundred is the one that's getting interspersed. So it gets just every other one is a hundred from now on. 
Um, interspersed with, I guess, is what I was thinking of. Another iterator. Map means like call a function on it. So it feels to me like we could definitely do size, hint, count, nth um, much more easily, uh, more efficiently than these methods, but a lot of these other ones. There's so much. Our oh, skip is good. So just miss the first five and then start iterating. So we would just literally increment count here to do that. Um, and yeah, maybe take would. Not sure we could implement that more efficiently. Anyway, I think we've sufficiently answered that question, right? There's a few methods in there that we could implement much more efficiently. Um, but I don't think we're actually going to implement them. We're going to be here all day. This has already been going on quite a long time, hasn't it? So next up is asref, and uh, which I think we've already done, and asmute, which we haven't done, um, but should be pretty straightforward. Um, and then after that, index. Oh, which that allows u square brackets to uh, to find items. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We can call vec brackets one. Um, then we're gonna we're gonna look at whether we can get rid of some of these bounds that say. Um, colon default, um, or colon copy in the where clauses. Then another type of iterator. You know, I mentioned that we have the copying iterator. Well, there's another iterator which borrows from stuff, so we can do that too. Um, and then they want us to improve our implementation of index. And then we're going to talk about DRO. Gosh, there's a lot in this stuff. So we're going to take another break here, but, um, uh, in a bit, I will come back. I think probably as a separate video because this video has got quite long enough already. And we'll do uh, as mute in the next next time. So thanks for watching. See you next time.